guys, it's Boki here from Gigi's Fabric Shop and home to Janome Junkies. And we have a really fun video in store for you guys today. We're gonna be talking about needles. Um, I've been noticing a lot of people not really sure what needles to use for what projects. So we're gonna tackle that today. We're gonna talk about the Schmetz needles because that's what we carry here exclusively. So we're gonna dive into the different types of needles, the different sizes, when to use what, and just to make sure you have the right needle on your machine. And then stay tuned for the end of the video. We're gonna be giving away some of these pocket guide books. This is what I call the needle Bible. So you guys are gonna wanna stay tuned to see how you could win one. So I kind of broke up the needles that we have on the website into some categories. I kind of put these in like quilting, um, everyday uh, category, um, bag making category, and then there's some specialty bag making needles, and then I have specialty needles in the back. So we're going to kind of dive into that. Um, we carry the Schmetz brand exclusively. All right, so first off, I'm going to start with the basic needles that a lot of us are very familiar with. So the first one's going to have to be the universal needle. Okay, this is what that needle looks like. These are the chrome needles, so the packaging looks a little bit different. Um, the chrome needles are really nice because they tend to last a little bit longer. They're more heat resistant and all that good stuff. So we've just really, really been happy with these chrome professional grade needles from Schmetz. So um, I'm going to use the pocket guy little Bible that I have to kind of explain to you how the universal needle is cut the tip of the needle because that really makes a huge difference. But before we start into that, let me kind of go over the universal sizing. So these are just regular home sewing needles, nothing to them. These are the home sewing machine needles, the 130 over um, 705. Okay, this is just literally probably 90% of modern day machines that are just home machines use this size of needles. Okay, so these are gonna fit the Jukies, these are gonna fit the Janomis, um, they're gonna fit most machines. Um, literally everything here. If you have any specific questions, you can always feel free to add, ask in the comments on if you're not sure if it fits your machine or not in the Juki or Janome world. Okay. So the universal needle, oh, I wanted to say the sizes. So this sizing goes for all the needles here. So even if we're talking about the specialty needles, if we're talking about quilting needles, denim, there's a sizing that it goes to. Okay. So it kind of starts off the, there's really small needles. There's like 60 by eight. There's 65 by nine. There's 70 by 10. There's those really, really small small needles. So I don't think we offer any of the really tiny needles on the website. Maybe the smallest needle we carry is a 10. Um, and I'll kind of go in those sizes. So needles always have two numbers. It'll be like 70, 10, 75, 11, 80, 12. We really want to pay attention to the second number because the first number is like a European system. And the second number is our system. So 70, 10 is going to be really small. And then eight, it goes eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, um, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, blah, 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 all that fun stuff. So on most machines, you have to always want to make sure you're manual to know what's the thickest size needle you can use. For instance, on the Juki um, TL18, the thickest needle you can use is an 18. On the HD9, Janome HD9, the thickest needle you can use is an 18. So always refer to your manual, just so you can kind of, um, you know, pay attention to that. So that universal numbering system is going to be the same across the board, okay? And there's certain instances where you want to use a very small needle, like a 70, 10, and then there's those thicker projects where the 18 or the 16 just makes sense because of the materials you're working with, okay? So let's just keep that in mind. It goes 10, 11, 14, 16, 18, and then so on. So we're really paying attention to the second number that's really the number that makes the most sense to us okay so the greater the number the stronger the needle the smaller the number the weaker the needle okay pretty easy to remember it's not like thread where it's like flipped so let's start off with the universal needle okay the universal needle has a slightly rounded point it's going to be great for wovens knits can handle leather denim stretch coarse knitwear this is like your emergency needle right like if you run out of a specialty needle universals are there to just kind of be your backup save the day uh, maybe get a project done i think these are always great to have in your stash these come in a variety of sizes the one i'm holding right now is the 8012 so just depending on what you're working with an 8012 is going to be pretty pretty fine um this would be good for piecing your uh, quilts together uh working with two layers of a, of a cotton three layers of cotton um linens, things like that. But at 8012, it's not going to be a very strong, durable needle. So just keep that in mind. And this is universal. So is it the best for all projects? No. But if you're in a pickle, this is the good one to do. The next one we're going to focus on is the jeans and denims needle. Okay, so these are more specific. These are designed more for jeans and denim. So let me go to the little part in the manual. Okay, so the jeans and denim needles are for 
that kind of material. They have a, an advanced point design that's a Schmetz exclusive, another reason why we love Schmetz around here. It's great for penetrating extra thick woven fabric, denims, or quilts with minimum needle deflection, reduced risk of needle breakage, and skipped stitches. So this is going to be a very strong needle. So this is going to be great for working with denim, working with wax canvas, uh, I mean, sorry, cotton canvas, uh, duck canvas, anything that's heavy woven, like it's very similar to denim, this is going to be perfect for that. Uh, most common of the time, people buy the 100 by 16 because that's going to be a very strong and durable needle. Um, so I wouldn't recommend using a 16 on like your quilts or anything like that unless you were making a quilt out of denim or you were working with um, really, really heavy canvas for whatever reason. But this is going to be a very strong needle for multiple layers of thick woven fabrics. Okay, so kind of keep this out of the picture when you're working with those lighter, more medium weight bags and, and quilts and things like that. Okay. Next up is the top stitch needle. And this is really one of my fan favorites right now. I love the top stitch needles. I didn't really learn about them until sometime last year. And I was like, wow, this is really game changing. I've helped a lot of customers with this. So this is the top stitch needle. Let me go to the little book in here where it talks about that for you guys. So I can just tell you the exact um, cut of these needles. So the top stitch needles have an extra long eye. Okay. So the eye is the, is the part of the needle where the thread goes through. Okay. And then when you're looking at a needle, there is a side where it kind of divots in that's called the scarf of the needle. And that's where the thread kind of like hugs the, the needle. Okay. So what happens with, with an, something like this is it's really great for top stitching. It's great for when you're working with multiple layers or even like a poor quality, um, thread or I'm sorry, fabric. So if you're working with maybe something very old, something very delicate, this might be something to consider. Okay. Um, it helps you achieve those perfectly straight stitch lines and, um, you know, you would use this with like your straight stitch plate if you're working on a computerized machine but this is going to be a great needle if you're struggling with the project and you feel like you're getting skip stitches you feel like your stitches are just not looking very defined the beauty in having a larger eye is that it's making a larger loop at the bottom so it's creating a larger loop to secure that stitch and that helps eliminate those st skipped stitches so this is fabulous for top stitching purses, making those straps on your bags, even free motion quilting or quilting in general. This is going to take it to the next level, makes your stitches really, really defined. This is like my favorite needle right now. I think it's just really a game changer in your stitch quality. So definitely consider swiping up some of these top stitch needles. This is the 9014. This one's going to be the most universal. I have to say I use 9014s 90% of the time on all my projects. The 8012 is available would be good for doing your quilts. 9014 is going to be fabulous for free motion quilting and quilting. I always recommend a 9014 when you're quilting. Um, and then if you do need to size up when doing those bags, if you feel like it's not strong enough, 9014 or 116 would be a great option for my bag makers out there. All right. Next up, we have the Microtex Sharp Needles. These needles are extra, extra sharp, okay? These are great for working with microfibers, polyester, silks, foils, artificial leathers, so like vinyl, cork, and all that good stuff, especially in um, bag making. The really nice thing about these needles in particular is that they have a very thin, acute point shape to that needle. They're very, very sharp. This is so important when we're working with synthetic materials like faux leather and cork, because once the hole is there, the hole is there. You're not going to really be able to get rid of that hole. So it's really nice because this is just going to cut into that material so nice and the thread's going to fill it out perfectly. So this is a must when you're working with synthetic materials like that, or even foils, like it mentioned in here in polyesters. Okay. Um, so keep that in mind. A 9014 again is going to be a very great universal size. Um, there are smaller sizes and 8012 is going to be great if you're working with just two layers of, um, uh, like leather or cork, like faux leather or cork. Uh, just keep in mind that an 8012 or a 7511 is going to be way too small for your bag projects. Like make me an oath right now that we're not going to use 7511s when we're constructing our bags. That is way too small. So 9014s is the way to go if you're constructing a bag with those, those materials like faux leather and cork and things like that. So the Microtex needles are fabulous for getting that really, really awesome stitch quality. Now for my quilters in the house, the quilting needle is where it's at. You guys are going to love these needles. These are perfect for piecing, machine piecing. Um, they have a special taper design to them. So they allow um, you to penetrate the fabric really easy and they help eliminate any skip stitches. 9014s are my 
favorite. I use those all the time. Even in piecing, I use 9014s. I, I don't really use a smaller needle. If you want a smaller needle with a small, smaller hole, you can do a 8012 needle and that'll give you that same effect. Some people like to use 7511s, but just keep in mind when you're going to go to free motion quilt or quilt, you do not want to use a 7511 or an 8012. Those needles are too small and they're, they're just not going to give you the stitch quality that you need. Okay. So 9014s are going to be the way to go in quilting, free motion quilting, uh, binding your quilts on your machine and really just working with any of those, um, materials very similar to that. Okay. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to move on to our specific needles, like for leather and for vinyl. And we do offer specific needles for you guys. All right. These are going to be really exclusive to like the HG9 and the TL18, because remember how I said the maximum size I can use is an 8012. I mean, I'm sorry, a 110 by 18. Double check those manuals because those manuals will tell you what's the thickest needle you can use and you don't want to cause any damage and, you know, affect the bobbin case area or throw your machine out of timing. So definitely look in your manual. Okay. So these are the 110s by 18s. All right. These are fabulous. These are leather needles. Okay. So these leather needles are great to use on leather, artificial leather and heavy non-woven synthetics. It has a cutting point. And in the industrial world, there's needles that are diamond cut, meaning that they have a specific shape to them where they're going to penetrate that leather perfect so that the, the stitch quality looks most defined and that that thread is filling out that hole the best. So there is such thing as using too big of a needle when, and when working with things and that can make your stitch quality suffer because the thread is not filling that hole as much. Okay. So keep that in mind too. If you're getting needle breakages, you might be using too small of a needle. And if your stitches aren't looking too good, double check that you're not using too big of a needle. So this is going to be fabulous when working with industrial style threads, like the tech 70 thread on the 2010 or the HD nine. Um, this is going to be a really good one or the, um, 110 or I'm sorry, the hundred by 16. That's going to be a really good size when working with industrial threads too, but this is fabulous for leather and, um, non woven synthetic materials. It's really going to take your stitch quality to that next level. And they're really strong and really durable. Okay. Next up, we have the vinyl needles, which are pretty cool. Vinyl needles are non-stick. They're made out of this really nice um, anti-stick material. So I have been all over these non-stick needles for you guys. Um, they've been great for when you work with any kind of um, double-sided tape when putting zippers in bags, um, any temporary adhesive sprays, applique projects, waxed canvas, um, anything that kind of has some tack to it, even vinyl and like project bags and things like that. This is really cool because this is going to help, um, avoid getting the sticky residue buildup on your needles. Although that is inevitable and we can definitely do things to try to prevent it. You can't truly a hundred percent prevent it, but this definitely does help. It's great for working with anything fusible. So even in machine embroidery, applique, um, any kind of tapes and bags and things like that, this vinyl needles are fabulous for that. They just help not stick and just glide through the machine effortlessly kind of like your teflon or um, smooth foot that you use on your machine kind of the same ideology in a needle all right and this one's actually a pretty cool pack it's a variety pack so you get a 7010 and two 8012s a 9014 and 100 by 16 on the site we do sell um these packs and in individuals so if you only want a 9014s which is the staple if you only wanted 8012s if you're working with a little bit smaller two two layers of vinyl and then i think there's one more or there's the 16s on the website as well so all these needles that i'm talking about you guys today you can go down to the description and you can get them they're on our website they're on jukijunkies.com so you guys can get them at your leisure and like i said if you have any questions during this video about does this fit my juki does this fit my janome you can feel free to ask and we will do our best to assist you. All right. So those are those two kind of special needles. I would definitely recommend for my bag makers out there. You'll probably see them in some of our other videos that I mentioned before. All right. Now we're going to move on to my specialty needles, like those specialty needles for special kinds of projects. These were kind of like, you can find these in most people's stashes. These are going to be much more specific. So if you have an embroidery machine, 
they do have embroidery needles. Okay, so these are going to be great for working with uh, rayon, polyester, and other specialty kinds of embroidery threads. All right, it has a special scarf. Remember how I was talking about the scarf on the needle is right by the eye, and that's where the thread is kind of hugging the needle. It has a special kind of scarf and a widened groove and an enlarged eye to help protect fragile threads and against less friction so your thread, thread doesn't break and your tension and quality of stitches just looks nice and defined into its fullest potential. So the embroidery needles are fabulous. You definitely, if you can, definitely try to use embroidery needles on your machine because I promise you that special design in the needle makes such a big difference. I know it sometimes sounds silly. It's like all these needles look the same. How are they all different? Like the top stitch needle is a game changer. It is a game changer. So I promise you, if you try these embroidery needles on your embroidery machines, you're gonna be very impressed with the difference in your quality. All right, so again, these are provided in different sizes. 9014 is definitely the safest, um, 8012 for those finer projects, and, and you can make those accommodations kind of across the board here. If you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask. Next up, we have the stretch and jersey needles. Okay, I'm actually gonna pull up in the guide here to talk about each one because they both have a specific um, description to the, the needle point. Okay, so these are the jersey needles. Uh, these are great for knits and some stretch fabrics made especially for sewing on knits. The medium ball point does not damage or break knitted fabrics. Okay, so this one's especially for knits. The nice thing about ballpoint style needles is that the whole point is not to shred those kinds of materials. You kind of want it to like weave into the fabrics. Does that make sense? I know it's like, how does it do that? That's the whole point of a ball point. So it's not a super sharp needle like we were talking about in the micro text. We're talking about a needle that has a slightly rounded face to it. So that way it's able to weave through that fabric. Okay, so here is the jersey needle. And then for someone who's working with more stretch, we have stretch needles coming up, okay? Small intermission. We do have a small little Oh my basket. gosh. This is what we see in the background, guys. He couldn't be any closer he to her. He had an anxiety attack today. Oh my. He had to go to the doctors because he was shaking because his mother he was wasn't at the shop. He shaking in his boots. Alrighty, oh. back to our regular. <laughs> back to our regular show. scheduled program. Yeah. All right, so we're moving on to those stretch needles. So um, the, where, where did they go? This one, the jersey slash ballpoint needles are gonna be great for working with knits, but if you're working with stretchy fabrics, like got a lot of give to them, you're gonna wanna work with the stretch needles, okay? So here's what's going on with these. Uh, these are great when working with elastic materials that have a high elastic um, stretch to them. So like I said, very stretchy kind of knitwear. It also has a medium ball point, but it has a specifically designed eye and scarf to prevent skip stitches in working in very specific materials like that, okay? So keep that in mind. If you're working with very stretchy, grab those stretch needles. I promise it will make a very big difference to you. These are the 7511s. Um, you know, it depends on how thick your knits are and what exactly you're doing with your stretchy fabrics or your knits. You'll kind of have to go through them both. 7511s would be good for maybe just two layers of a lighter weight. Um, but if you're trying to do something high speed, like in a serger or in a cover stitch, I probably wouldn't recommend a 7511. I might recommend like an 8012 or a 9014 because you're going so fast. Um, and if you're working with something that has a good weight to it, the likelihood of you getting um, needle breakages are probably much higher. So just keep that in the back of your head and 8012 or 9014 would be fabulous. But if you're just using these on your machines, putting you know maybe two pieces together, I think the 7511s would be great for that. So quick recap, stretch needles are for stretchy, very flexible, elastic kinds of materials. And then Jersey ballpoint needles are gonna be fabulous for knits, okay? So there's that. Last one on the list today is going to be our metallic needles. And I really want to read you guys a description for this one because metallic needles are really cool. We actually offer um, metallic needle, uh, metallic thread on jukijunkies.com. It is our glisten fabric. It is so beautiful. It literally looks like 
uh, metal on a string. It's so vibrant and so happy. So if you're working with metallic thread, if you ever worked with it, if you don't like it, it's probably because you weren't using the appropriate needle for it. It was giving you such a big hassle. So this is what you're going to want to consider. This, these are the metallic needles. Okay. Metallic. This is great for working with metallic and other specialty threads. A must have truly a must have for sewing with sensitive metallic thread. Okay. It has an elongated eye, which prevents shredding and breakage of metallic thread. So specifically designed for working with that kind of hard to understand specialty kinds of threads out there. So I'm telling you, this is going to help so much. If you've been like, I'm, I can't work with this kind of thread. This is way too finicky this is here to save the day. All right. So these are the 80 12s. This is going to be a great size to use. If it has a good weight to it, if you're working with maybe a thicker project, you might want to consider going up, but 80 12s are pretty safe. So that is that y'all. That was a lot to digest, but it was just nice to kind of go over it together. We learned how the sizes work that second number as it increases the needle strength increases. We learned to double check our manuals and make sure that we understand what's the thinnest and thickest needles we can use on our machines. And we kind of learned like if I'm working with this kind of fabric, what I should be using. Maybe if I'm experiencing skip stitches, maybe I should try a top stitch. If I'm working with cork and vinyl a lot, maybe I should switch to microtex needles. Um, Voki, I've been free motion quilting with a 7511. We don't want to do that. <laughs> that is no good. Okay. So we kind of went over a lot of stuff today and you want to make sure that you are commenting any questions that you guys have during this video. Please do not hesitate to ask. We're always ready to help. We really pride ourselves in our customer service. So let's talk about how you can win yourself a nice little needle book Bible. All right. So how to win. It's going to be really, really simple. You guys, all you have to do is like this video. All right. Give it a nice little thumbs up and you're going to subscribe to our channel because we do post every week at, on Sunday at 5 PM Eastern standard time. So that's for our Juki junkies and our Janome's channel. Um, you guys can look forward to that every Sunday and by subscribing, you'll get those notifications and alerts when they come out. And then the last requirement to win is going to be comment below something new you learned today. The, the most interesting thing you learned today, because we covered a lot of stuff. So I'm sure you learned something new today. So check that out. Do that. We're going to announce, we're going to pick a couple winners um, and we'll announce that the following Sunday for you guys. But don't worry if you don't get picked, I will be providing a link in the um, description for you guys. So you guys can check out for your own if you really, really want one. And I'm telling you, I constantly refer to this book. It is spectacular. It has even more than what we covered today. There's hamming needles. There's um, show us the page a little bit. Just yeah, here, let's kind of flip through it. So there's all the stuff I talked about kind of gives you all the size. Oh, look, it even has needle and fabric recommendations. So working with cork, corduroy, cotton, crepe fabric, crinkle fabric, linen fabric. It's, it's a fabulous book. Here is like a little um, anatomy of the needle. So you kind of learn what all that means. And there's what I was talking about. There's the scarf. There's that eye of the needle, the tip, the groove, the blade. There's little color coding that Schmetz does too. And um, just really is a wealth of information. So there's all kinds of fun stuff in here. So definitely, definitely super worth the buy, I think. And I, these are under $10. So they're truly spectacular. Um, so make sure you guys like, and subscribe, comment below, enter in to win. Um, and if you have any questions, do not hesitate to call. You can always send us an email at sewing machines with an S 411 at gmail.com with any of your questions or concerns, or you can give us a call at Gigi's Fabric Shop, 813-661-9000. And I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.